Hello everyone, happy Friday. Welcome to the March 3rd episode of the Bacon Bets podcast. Full disclosure, I'm recording this episode the night before. This is Thursday night. Uh, every second Thursday I do a spot on VEASAN with uh, my friend Greg Peterson for around 30 minutes. Uh, and that starts at uh, quarter past midnight every second Thursday night. So uh, I have no desire to stay up until about 1 o'clock and then wake up in five hours to record the podcast. So every second Thursday night, I'll be recording Friday's episode the night before. Hopefully, the odds don't change between tonight and when they uh, and when you listen to this and when this uh, episode is uploaded Friday morning. But if it is, that is why I give you my play two numbers so then you know uh, if the odds do shift, if I would still play it or not. Um, also, the tough thing with recording the night before is I don't know how all of my bets have done. So far, so good. Uh, in terms of the bets I gave out on the show yesterday, four NHL bets. The first one hit. We had the, the Kraken. They thankfully beat the Red Wings in overtime, 5-4. Uh, uh, I took the Flames over the Maple Leafs. As of recording this right now, there's about 10 minutes left in the game. Leafs are up 2-1, so if that stays steady, that will lose. Um, Canucks wild 2-1. I got the under, so we need uh, some goals to slow down in that one. I do have the Sharks uh, over the Blues pick them, and that's 2 nothing at the end of the first period. So still uh, waiting for some results. Hopefully you can squeak out uh, two of these last three games and then finish 3-1 and one on the night for some profit. That would be good. Uh, but regardless, let's uh, get into my picks for Friday. Now what I'm doing on this show is i got three NHL picks for Friday night's action. And then I have... A college basketball tournament pick. Earlier in the week, I gave out some outright picks uh, for some smaller mid-major conferences. There is a conference that starts on Saturday. It is the Big Sky. So I'll give you my pick and breakdown to win the Big Sky conference tournament. Everyone's favorite conference, the Big Sky. Now, for a change, uh, I'm going to say this at the start of the episode instead of the end. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe right now. Like the video. Leave a comment. Let me know your best bet for tonight or this weekend. If you're listening uh, to the episode of the podcast uh, on Spotify or Apple or wherever else you're listening to it, uh, leave a little rating and a review. That helps us a ton. And if you have 30 seconds, go and subscribe uh, to the YouTube channel as well. Uh, in the just second week of existence of the YouTube channel, and we're almost at 100 subscribers. So let's see if we can get to 100 before next week. Um and hopefully, hopefully, if we get to hundreds of sub subscribers, that'll bring up some good luck. <laughs> My picks have not gone how I would have hoped since launching the YouTube version of this podcast. But hey, that's sports betting, baby. I don't claim to be professional sports better. I claim to be better than the average person, and I like to have some fun along the way. So let's uh, try to keep the fun going here. Let's get some good vibes heading into the weekend. Before I actually give you my picks for Friday night, uh, I did give out a pick on Joe Osborne's show on Thursday, chasing that paper for the UFC. I'll quickly just give it to you right now. Um, Cyril Gaunt over John Jones for the UFC 285 main event. I have placed the largest bet I've placed in my life on Cyril Gaunt. Plus 140 to defeat John Jones. Actually, what happened was when the odds were released, the odds came out as a pick em, minus 110 apiece. I thought there was no way that uh, the odds would shift in favor of John Jones. I thought for sure Gon would be a favorite by the time fight week came around, so I hammered him at minus 110. Unfortunately, I read the situation wrong. He's now an underdog, so I doubled my bet and put even more money on him this week as an underdog, which now makes it the biggest bet I've placed my entire life. Now, does that mean it's going to win? Probably not, because I actually don't have a great <laughs> uh, history with um, big bets. Actually, before this, my biggest bet of all time was on Chris Cyborg against Amanda Nunes. Uh, what, five, six years ago? And if you're a UFC fan, you'll remember she got knocked out in the first round. So um, just because I'm placing a big bet, uh, that does not mean I recommend you do the same. Uh, but I am on Gone. Uh, if you want to see my uh, full breakdown of it, you can go check out Thursday's episode of Chasing That Paper. Um, but basically, it comes down to John Jones hasn't fought in three years. He wasn't impressive in his last two fights before this break. He's going up in weight class. I think Cyril Gone's a terrible st uh, stylistic matchup for him. Um, I don't think John physically looks good. I don't think he has the power to compete at heavyweight. Um, I don't think he has the speed or footwork to compete against Cyril Gaon. I do not think Cyril Gaon should be the underdog in this fight. Uh, so I love Cyril Gaon. Uh, and the main event of UFC 285, biggest bet I've ever placed. 
Uh, so if you want to tail long, please do. But don't, uh, if slash when it loses, please don't get mad at me. Because if it does lose, don't worry, I'll be right there with you. Uh, crying myself to sleep because how much money I lost. So <laughs> that, that's for Saturday night. Uh, I will also be on Joe's show Friday. If you're listening this Friday morning, it'll be coming up live, as always, on Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays at 11 a.m. Eastern. Uh, if you're watching or listening to this after that, you can go back and watch that too. And I'll give out my college basketball best bets for Friday's action on that show. So far, the ones I gave out on Joe's show on Thursday hit Ryder. Uh, I lost Purdue. I got the minus four. They won by two. Um, and the other one is Arizona USC, the under, which just started, but it's on good pace for the under so far. So we'll see how that goes. Now, with all of that out of the way, Let's get into my picks for this show. We're going to start off with another Kraken bet. This time I'm going to be betting on the total. I bet on them to beat the Red Wings here Thursday night. Friday night, I'm going to take them uh, against the Blue Jackets. I'm going to go under six and a half. Now, I briefly mentioned this stat uh, on the show yesterday, um, and I want to bring it up again today because it's the way that I'm going to – it's a little bit of a shift that I've made in handicapping – um, the NHL and that is by looking at stats that are f- it five on five score and venue adjusted uh, so these numbers are adjusted both for home and a ro- home and away and they're also adjusted uh, based on the score because teams do play differently uh, based on if they're leading or if they're trailing in games so all these numbers are a little bit more adjusted to make them all even uh, kind of playing field because if you just look at last 10 games flat well it's going to be different if one team has seven road games, one team has seven home games, one team was up a lot in several of those games, then played defensively. So uh, you can see all these st- all these stats, as I mentioned yesterday, over a natural stat trick. Uh, I'm going to start using this a little bit more often, so you're going to hear me say five-on-five five score and venue adjusted numbers more and more in the coming weeks. Uh, but this is my little tweak I'm starting to do after my recent cold streak. If you're on a cold streak, I always think you should tweak something a little bit because... Uh, a month of not so great NHL bets. There's improvement that could have been made. So this is the improvement I'm making. Uh, so far, so good for Thursday night. But this all goes to say, if you look at uh, over each team's last ten games, five on five score and venue adjusted numbers. These two teams are 18th and 27th in expected goals for. Not exactly uh, offensive juggernauts here, actually. And if you look at just overall numbers for the Columbus Blue Jackets, their average combined score per 60 minutes over their last ten games is 5.44, well below the set total of six and a half. Now, my concern in this game is goaltending. Um, I think it's probably going to be Martin Jones because I know Grubauer went for the Kraken tonight. So it's probably going to be Martin Jones on Friday night. He stinks. Elvers Merzlikens, I always struggle with his name. Shitty this season, uh, but this month he has played a little bit better. 9-12 save percentage and six starts this month. The best he's played all season. So I hope he stays hot there. But if I do have one concern about this bet, it is the goaltending. But I'm not impressed by either team's offensive numbers. Uh, So with the total at six and a half, I'm going to take the under between the Kraken and the Blue Jackets for my first NHL bet tonight. Second bet, another under bet. I'm going the Winnipeg Jets and the Edmonton Oilers under 6.5. You can get this at plus money, plus 105. This is shocking to say, but it is true. Five on five, score and venue adjusted over the last 10 games. No team has been better defensively then the Edmonton Oilers, first in the NHL and expected goals against 1.97. Jets, middle of the pack, 15th at 2.66. Also first in high danger scoring chances allowed, and the Jets are coming in at 11th. Uh, the big pickup for the Oilers, I think, might have been one of the uh, most underrated and maybe most one of the most impactful pickups at the heading into the trade deadline. Ekholm for the Edmonton Oilers, a defensive defenseman they got from National, Nashville. That's huge for them. Because historically, it has been their defense that has cost them. Now, if we're talking long run, if we're talking Stanley Cup playoffs, they do have a lot of issues with their goaltending. They need someone to step up for them. But Ekholm is a huge get for them defensively for a team that already over the past couple of weeks have been playing some of the best defensive hockey that they've played in years, over the past decade, maybe two decades. Uh, and also, the Jets likely going to start Con- uh, Connor Hellebuck. That's not confirmed. He has uh, had two rough starts heading into... Friday night's game, but uh, this is a guy who he's been good enough for for long enough. I don't expect him to just all of a sudden turn into a shitty goaltender. I expect a little of a little bit of a bounce back game here. Nine two two save percentage on the season still. So with all that being said, I love that we're getting plus money in this spot. I'll take Oilers Jets 
under six and a half plus 105. Let's uh, to give out a money line bet here. Underdog. Underdog alert. Underdog alert uh, for my final NHL bet of the night. Sorry, just had to adjust uh, the graphic here a little bit. Uh, Canadians uh, plus 112 against the Anaheim Ducks. Now, I backed the Ducks the other night when they lost in overtime. But I'm going against them now, but it's all about the odds here. Uh, I was willing to back them as big underdogs against a struggling Capitals team. It almost paid off. Now they are favorites. Uh, I know the Canadians stink too, but uh, the Ducks are, in my opinion, the worst team in the NHL, and they do not deserve to be favorites against anyone. Five on five, score and venue adjusted over their last 10 games. Dead last in Corsi percentage. Dead last in expected goals percentage. Dead last in high danger scoring chances. Not good. Uh, Montreal isn't a ton better. It's not like Montreal is a, a you know a top tier team or top half or even top twenty team in the NHL, but they severely don't rank the Ducks in those three categories. Um, and you can kind of that can be illustrated just even by looking at something simple as straight up. Uh, if you just look over their last ten games, their expected goal or not not even their expected goals, just their average goal differential minus one point six nine over their last ten games. Canadians at plus point four nine. So. Canadians are playing better hockey. Their analytics are better. I know they are at Anaheim. It's a bit of a road trip here for them. Uh, but still, plus money, plus 112. Uh, there's no way I would ever set the Ducks' as favorites against hardly anyone. So I will take the Montreal Canadiens, les habitants, plus 112 in Anaheim against the Ducks. Now, if you're just listening to this or if you're not watching the YouTube version, uh, I didn't say what I would play these numbers to, so I'll do that now, especially with me recording Sunday night, Blue Jackets, Kraken, under 6.5. I got it at minus 110. I would play that to minus 120. Uh, Jets, Oilers, under 6.5. That's plus 105. I would play that to minus 105. And then Canadians and Ducks, I got it at plus 112. I love that bet. If you get any kind of plus money on the Canadians, I would take that bet. So even if you get that even money or plus 100, I like the Canadians in that spot there now let's talk the big sky everyone's favorite tournament uh, unfortunately i don't have a hot take i don't have a 10 to 1 i don't have any kind of underdog pick for this one but i, I gotta trust the numbers here i'm actually gonna go with the betting favor to win i'll take montana state to win the big sky conference at plus 140 they are the number two seed in the conference but they are the betting favorite and i think for good reason they are the most well-rounded team in the Big Sky Conference Tournament heading into it, 157th in effective field goal percentage, 81st in defensive efficiency, 160th in rebounding, 96th in extra scoring chances. No, they don't jump off the page in any area, but they're not terrible in any area either. They're kind of solid everywhere, whereas the other top teams are good in some areas, but they have some weaknesses that I think uh, will cost them. For example, Eastern Washington can shoot the lights out, but they're terribly they're terrible defensively, and they turn the ball over a ton montana not montana state just montana is kind of a lesser version of eastern washington they can shoot the ball really well but they turn the ball over a ton and they don't play good defense uh weber state isn't really good at anything i'm not concerned about them at all um and then the rest of the teams are just all junk uh if there is a, a different bet i'd go maybe weber state maybe there's a bit of value there i think they're all the way up at 10 to 1 uh but i'm going to go with the favorite here montana state also they're the hottest team in the conference heading into the tournament 10 and 1 in their last 11 games, uh, that one loss was to Weber State, which um, that's why maybe you want to go with Weber State here. Uh, and they're also on the good side of the bracket. As the number two seed, um, they will face uh, Weber State in the second round, I believe, uh, like their second game. But I think their two biggest challenges are Montana and Eastern Washington, uh, and they won't face either of them until the championship game. Um, and then maybe when it gets to the championship game, maybe we'll have a chance to hedge. We'll see. Um, but with all that being said, if you want to bet on the Big Sky Tournament, the winner of that, I like Montana State. I know it's the favorite. I, I apologize. But you can still get it at plus 140. Now, shop around for that as well because uh, I looked at a few books. Uh, they were plus 115, I think, at FanDuel. I got them plus 140 at DraftKings. So that's a pretty big difference, plus 115 and plus 140. These futures, anytime you bet futures, even more so than games because most of the time, most games especially when it comes to points spread, they're going to be pretty close. But futures, shop around, folks. Have several sports books because you will see big differences in future markets, especially something like the Big Sky Conference Tournament, which isn't exactly a huge market. So there you go. Those are my best bets for today. 
Um, I will sneak in one final quick one here. Uh, if you want a live bet on the Arnold Palmer Invitational, Scotty Scheffler, he's still plus 850 live. I took him plus 900 pre-tournament. He's T5. He's only three strokes back from John Rahm. Um, but the main reason why Data Golf, if you're not familiar with Data Golf, great resource for uh, betting on golf. Uh, it is a paid service for the most part, though. I use it, but I will let you know Data Golf has Scotty Scheffler as an 11% chance to win the tournament. And you can get him at plus 850. And the translated odds of uh, the implied probability of plus 850 um, is 10.53%. So about half a percent of value there. Um, and that's no big win percentage compared to uh, odds that you can bet based on uh, data golf's analytics. So Scotty Scheffler has a better chance of winning than maybe some of the live odds indicate. So um, I might even double down with Scotty Scheffler. But if you haven't bet on a winner yet, I think now's the time. I know John Rahm looks invincible. Uh, but he did lose strokes off the tee on Thursday. He putted the absolute lights out, which is what, what got him to 7-under. Uh, but I think putting is the stat that's the most volatile of the four main areas throughout a tournament. If he continues to lose strokes off the tee, and if his putter cools down a little bit, uh, guys are going to be able to catch him. And if anyone catches him, it's going to... Uh, Scotty Scheffler, I think, has the best chance. So, little bonus pick for you. Um, Scotty Scheffler, plus 850 at BetMGM. Uh, a lot of books have him plus 750. I believe it was BetMGM that had him plus 850 live to win the Arnold Palmer Invitational. So there you have it. This has been the Friday episode of the Bacon Bets podcast. Uh, thank you all so much for listening. Like, subscribe, rate, and review, blah, 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 all that stuff. Good luck with your picks tonight. Good luck with your picks this weekend. Gambler bless. I'll talk to you all on Monday.